So you've heard a lot from me today about our principles, um, guiding us, our four priorities. Um, I've gone as much as we can at a high level. I'd now like to invite to the stage, um, really, someone that you need to know if you don't already. He's our founder, he's our CTO, he's the guy who started all this, and I'm proud to call him a good friend, Joachim Monte. Hey. Thank you. Thank you. At Unity today, we have two big focus areas. John talked a lot about graphics quality. And to achieve high-quality graphics, we're focused on those two areas. During the keynote today, we'll show you several awesome demos that are of tools made specifically for artists and animators, because that is a very important initiative for us to really make better tools for artists and animators. Now, secondly, we have a focus on scaling Unity across the board, from optimizing performance to better workflows. Our focus is really on helping you build the highest quality games. Some of those projects are still out in the future, but I want to give you a glimpse into that future of where we're really heading. Now, Unity has always been great at prototyping and iteration time. But when your project gets bigger and lots of assets are in it, then iteration time slows down. So this is what we're very focused on solving now. So our first initiative is our new asset pipeline. Currently, when you import a project folder, Unity will perform the import, show progress bar, and then you wait. Now, in 2014, we brought you the cancel button to the import bar. <laughs> but what we really want to do is we want to remove it completely. So we decided to completely rewrite our import pipeline. And the main thing that we're doing is we're doing all our asset imports in the background. So basically, when you open a project, you can open it immediately. And it shows up. And then when you actually select an asset or open a scene, then Unity will make sure that the scene and the assets that are used by that scene have already been imported. While all the other assets in your project, they are simply importing in the background while you're working. So essentially, we'll make it so that the project import time scales with the assets that you're using as opposed to the assets that are in your whole project folder. And that's, of course, massively more, usually. Another thing that we're doing with this new import pipeline is we're making it so that multiple processes are working on importing all these assets together. So that means they run in parallel, and thus a full project import becomes much faster. So, this is quite central tech in Unity in order to really push Unity to the next level. It's still a while out in the future, but we're making very good progress on this. Now, a second topic is um, in the editor, we have always had great iteration times. But of course, there are situations where you actually want to deploy to a device and do that again and again and again. And you want to do it quickly. So today, Unity builds the executable, builds all your assets, builds all your scripts, and then you upload it to a device. And of course, that can be very time consuming. So particularly on mobile VR platforms, it is very important to have a very quick and fast iteration time when testing on the device. And so we're working on a feature that is basically a hot reload feature where the standalone player instead it simply pulls the data, it pulls the script code, it pulls the assets when they change. So that means the iteration time gets much, much faster. So that's really important for iterating quickly, especially in the last couple, um, in the last phase of your project. Additionally, we have also a team that is looking at optimizing load times in general. I think that's very much a, a, that's a really important areas for us to focus on. 
Now, when shipping your game, one thing that you always want more of is, of course, performance. In particular, the biggest gains we can get in Unity is all about getting to 100% multi-core utilization. Over the last two years, we have already put quite a bit of work into multi-threading parts of the engine, in particular, rendering. So, as you can see here, this is a stress test Viking Village scene that we made. And in 5.3, we had um, basically our render loops were running on the main thread. So that is the code that basically figures out which renders to render, how to sort them, um, and what state to set for each rendered object. But you can also see that actually the thread that then submits all these draw calls to the native graphics API, that is the render thread, the second bar there. And that one is actually, um, is actually also a bottleneck. And so what we did in Unity 5.4 with the, render, uh, with the um, uh, re rendering jobs is we made it so that the work which is done on the main thread, the render jobs, can be distributed to the worker threads. So you can see the main thread CPU consumption goes all the way down, but what happens is that the, the CPU consumption on the render thread goes all the way up, and it's really the bottleneck now. So what it means is that Overall, in this particular game, it's only a 20% increase. C Sharp game code can run and do work in parallel on the main thread, of course. So that's the big improvement, that you basically have all this free time to basically run your game code. And now, what we have been busy now, particularly on the PS4 team, they are the first team that has, uh, that has shipped this, is um, we have been adding support for native render jobs. And what that means is it's an API where we can directly from our jobs talk to the native graphics API. And that means the render, the, render, the render thread itself, basically all the work it does, gets distributed to all the worker threads. And now you can see here the, the multi-core utilization really goes all the way up and it's really well distributed and the main thread has even less work to do. And so you can put a lot more stuff on the main thread and overall, this gives us a 2.5x speed improvement. Yeah. So the next step is bringing that to a lot more platforms. Now, making graphics faster is always a big win. But there's, of course, a lot more a lot of other engine code in Unity that's not particularly related to graphics. For example, all of our simulation code. For example, animation systems, NavMesh system, physics systems, they all get and set transform values, and they all change the positions of your characters and all these things. And so, for a long time, multi-threading these subsystems was very difficult for us because the transform component itself wasn't able to be uh, to be accessed from this job safely. And so we have rewritten our transform component from scratch and we built it in a way so that it can be safely written and read from, uh, from a job. And in this rewrite, we also optimize the transform component quite a bit. So even when you use it on the main thread, which is what you usually do when you write script code, um, it is much faster. So here we have a stress test where we basically have 10,000 um, mesh renders, separate mesh renders, and then we call transform.position on 10,000 mesh renders every frame. So we just move a bunch of objects around. And so you can see here, the performance to get and set the position on an Xbox One goes from 9.1 milliseconds to 5.9 milliseconds. And of course, after moving all these game objects in your C Sharp code, we have to update all the bounding volumes and start kicking them off to the rendering. And to do that, we have new code which recalculates the bounding volumes. And that code has gone from 11.5 milliseconds to 2.3. So combined, that's roughly a 2.5x speed up for a common 
operation that you will do in your game code. So that's, yeah. <laughs> So that's, so that's huge. So with that, I would like to show you a little demo that we built. So in this demo here, we have uh, 2,000 fish swimming around performing old school boat simulation. So all the simulation code is written in C sharp. Each fish has its own behavior with separation, alignment, and attraction. And they all interact with each other in quite realistic ways, ways in this swarm. So each fish is also represented by a separate game object with a full mesh render. So there's a transform component and a script driving it. Now, let's take a look what happens when we add uh, 20,000 fish. All right, there you go. There's 20,000 fish. OK, and you can see that, of course, runs uh, pretty slow. I mean, that wouldn't be acceptable to ship in a game with that framework. Fortunately. We have been working on a new system, our c -sharp job system. And let's turn that on. There you go. So as you can see, the frame rate immediately snaps back to a solid 30, 40 FPS. And it's very smooth. With our job system, you can write c -sharp code that can perform computation tasks which is run on all your cores. So the simulation runs eight times faster on this particular machine. Now, when writing multi-threaded code, there's usually one big problem. Writing deterministic code, multi-threaded code, making it not crash or randomly override some memory is really, really hard. I've certainly spent my share of sleepless nights debugging my own or other people's multi-threading, multi-threaded code in C++. And it's, it's pretty painful. It's not fun. They're really the hardest types of bugs to track down. And in Unity, I think of Unity as a safe sandbox where you can simply write code, assemble your assets, and experiment quickly. And Unity gives you automatically easy to understand error messages when you're doing something incorrectly. So that's exactly what we have brought to the, to the C-sharp job system. We have built a job debugging system into the editor that detects any possible race condition and essentially gives you a framework that helps you find any race condition right away, makes it simple for you to create safe and efficient multi-threaded code is very deeply integrated into Unity. Because in this example, for, in, in, the, in, this, in this demo here, for example, we have 20,000 complete game objects with mesh runners and everything. And every frame, we perform a full simulation step. And we set the transform position from a C-sharp job on our job system. And it all works completely safely and deterministically. So, I mean, I've seen this demo a couple times, but it still blows my mind that that is actually even possible, getting both the performance and the safety. It's like, um, it's like having your cake and eating it too. <laughs> so I'm, I'm really excited about all the new tech that we're working on at, in Unity at the moment. It very much feels like we're at an inflection point right now where the engine is about to really scale up to the next level and allow you to build far more ambitious projects. 